The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Your market's saving themselves a bit overnight. Quite the sell off on Friday. Coming off the hot jobs number, 3.5% unemployment. You have the S&Ps. We're about 100 points from where we were coming into that number. 3762 is where I am on my chart at about 8.30 on Friday. You accelerate into a price area of about 36.51. Now, Sunday night, futures open last night, man, 7 o'clock. You were down, folks, at 36.18. Okay, so market saving itself a bit. We'll see where we open right now. But 36.18, so you're talking about 50 points to the upside right now in terms of the acceleration, even in the last couple hours, right? Check it out. Even in the last 45 minutes, S&P's up about 23 points. 36.66, NASDAQ 100. Last night, we were below 11,000 on a few occasions. About 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30 as well. We're back 11,127. The Dow, 29,481. Dow was below 29,200 last night. Russell's positive by seven. We got Bitcoin, 19,385. Crude, pulling back a little bit from where we were on Friday. You accelerate from 88, $89, we'll call it, Friday morning up to 93.55. Crude, as we've seen the market pop a bit, you got crude pulling back even just in the last few minutes. Uh, look at the volatility going on. That's the 9.05 a.m. bar, folks. And we just traded down about 60 to 70 cents in the last three to four minutes alone. We got action in currencies, man. It is continuing. Gold continuing to struggle off $25. That's about 1.5%. Gold at 16.84. Going back on a longer term basis, that's a five year weekly back to the lows of 2018, up to the highs of COVID, August of 2020, almost made it back up to that level in March of 2022. This year, 2078 was the high. And you see where we are, man, chopping around near the bottom of that area, whether it's the lows of July of this year, the lows that you spiked to back in August of last year or the lows of March of last year as well. That's about 1775 to 1700. You did get us down as low as 1622 on gold back to 1684 for the gold contract back to a short term time frame. And let's jump to notes and bonds. And what do we got, folks? We got lower price and higher yield coming at you right now. And I'm going to pull it up right now in terms of the yield on the tenure. You talk about a pullback in price and an acceleration in yields. 3.89%, the yield on the 10-year, just that quick. You see Friday's volatility, but the move had already taken place, man, from Tuesday. I'm going to back this up 20 days for an hourly. Not sure why we went all the way from 110.5, we'll call it, up to almost 114. Did we get a 114 print? No, 113.30 was the high there. Okay, but what? You're still talking about three and a half points to the upside. And just like that, we've pulled back two and a half of those points back to 111.15. And then you put this thing on a daily. I mean, there's basically no blip whatsoever, just bouncing a bit off new lows. We're getting lower price. We're getting higher yield this morning. And let's jump to the VIX. Volatility index, quite a sell-off on Friday. VIX spiking back up near the 34 area. And just this morning, we're talking about 33.39 on a shorter-term time frame. There you see the acceleration overnight. We've backed off a bit as the markets have climbed. But still, always interesting, folks, when you have an elevated VIX and you get a positive market. Now, I just said the S&P is... 50 points off its low last night. So that's what's contributing to a little volatility premium in this market. Okay, even though we're positive by 10, we got volatility in this market as of Sunday night where we just traded up. I just said 36.18 was the low Sunday night, folks. 36.18 to be exact, the low Sunday night in the S&P. So we're up almost 50 points from that price level. But anytime you have the VIX is elevated, when you have a market that is positive, not a uh, sign of strength, in my opinion, folks. Sometimes you will get a market sell-off on that open because the VIX ain't lying, man. Volatility premium spikes up on people's back. We got a jobs number, folks, and we got CPI coming at you this week. I think we get CPI on Thursday. 
Somebody can let me know on the den, but I think that's coming. Uh, we got Fed minutes maybe on Wednesday, CPI on Thursday, I believe, not to mention earnings coming down the line as well. And where are we going to kick it off? Let's kick it off with Amazon, man. It seems like we talk about them enough on this program. I do have some stock in Amazon and retirement account, but no real active trades to speak of. It's going to be interesting to see how the sales season goes for them, and it kicks off right now. I uh, haven't even pulled up Amazon yet, but I think they probably got, what, their deal day going on today, right? Uh, starts at midnight tonight. That is the deal. So deals start at midnight. I mean, look at their front page, right? Uh, well, hold on. Let me get it back. It's not even Prime Day. What are they calling it? Early Prime Early Access Sale. Quite a marketing point, right? Prime Early Access Sale is what they're calling it. Come on. Explain for me. Uh, starts midnight, October 11th and 12th. Now, what I did see this weekend is Target, I think, had some deals over the weekend. So they were trying to headline that. Uh, Amazon, Walmart, kick off holiday sales with massive deals expected. You talk about inflation squeeze. Inventory inventory surge prompt retailers to offer steep price cuts. It's going to be an interesting holiday season, folks. Whether as a consumer, whether as a consumer facing higher costs in inflation, as a consumer that's going to be seeing steep price cuts because of in inventory levels by some of these retailers out there. Uh, and we have Amazon trying to join the party with not only an extra prime day, but they're squeezing in an early access sale in October, ahead of Black Friday in November, right? Ahead of the December holiday um, acceleration as well. Tech gadgets to sporting goods, massive online discounts, best car bargains likely in late November. That's Adobe talking about a report today. Walmart already touting deals on computers, toys, air fryers this week. Amazon, they're going to begin their early access sale. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. Um, it should be called uh, on offloading excessive inventory sale, because that's basically what it is. And Target's uh, weekly Black Friday deals have started. I saw something. They were advertising it. Deals through the weekend, something like that. Estimated online discounting in select categories. You're in the market for a computer, folks. How about it, man? 2021 was the number in yellow. 2022 is what you're going to see this year. Computers, 32% online discounting. Electronics. 27%. Furniture and bedding, the lowest number there, but that's still at 11 from basically nothing. Sporting goods is going to be at 17. Appliances, right? Appliances. What happened to the days of appliances? Can't find an appliance. Not this. Not the situation right now, man. 18% discounts. Apparel, television, toys, 22%. Uh, online holiday sales from November 1st to December 31st projected to be $209.7 billion. Hey, you want to hear something crazy? It is tough to quantify the wealth of some people, folks. Uh, but when you put it that way, Bezos, Musk, every single holiday sale, and just think about the money you money you spend personally over the months of November and December for the holiday, especially if you have a big family, if you have an extended family, depending on who you're buying presents for, right? Holiday sales for the entire months of November and December are barely going to be worth the worth of somebody like them. And that is just an obscene amount of money, point point made. Uh, that pales in comparison to last year's 8.6% gain. So it's gonna be up 2.5% from a year ago. And yeah, it pales, but boy, you push that over two years and that's more than 11%. And that's not even uh, compounding from 2.5 on the 8.6. That's just adding them up. That's an 11% gain over two years. Big numbers, folks. All right, folks, day two, we'll talk a little bit of housing when we get back, uh, mortgage rates, housing. We'll talk a little bit of earnings coming up this week as well. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up about 12 points right now, 36.65, right where we started off the program. Let's jump around to some currencies right now. You get the dollar index climbing yet again. We were at 113 overnight. We're just under that number right now at 112.99. You put the dollar index on a daily continued strength, folks. Higher highs, higher lows, making a run towards the upper portion of that trend line, making a run towards about the 115 area, 114.77, the prior high. And that's a daily. You're only going back to September 28th on the dollar index. Pretty well intact channel line, to say the least, man. You jump over to the euro US dollar. Inverse of that chart uh, just bounces up the top portion of that channel line. Euro US dollar at 97. You make a run to the bottom part of that channel line, man. You're talking about 93. Well within game for the euro US dollar. Pound is its own animal, man. Pound US dollar right now. You're talking about 110. Uh, that tail, I think that is real up until about 104 or something like that, uh, breaking again below the channel line, really not intact after that acceleration to the 105, 104 area. Maybe we see parity in the pound, not out of the realm, folks. We were just at 138 back in November. We're at 110 right now, and we gotta jump over to the yen, because you talk about a move, that's why gold's getting hammered today, right near the highs of 145.89. That's a daily, look at the climb over the last four days alone. You're at 143.52, we're up two full points to one, 45, 48, and so much for any type of pressure or intervention or that or thereabouts over in Japan, man, as the yen right now pushing 145, pushing highs that we have seen on September 22nd. Uh, and it gets all of that back in terms of the acceleration. This thing dove down to 140 on the news that there may be just even some a hint that intervention could come into things uh, in terms of the wording over there that. And it just claws it all back to 145.50 on the dollar yen. And as, excuse me, as I said, gold contract continuing to struggle, man, to say the least. And let's jump to notes and bonds because that's going to be the next conversation. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of mortgage rates. We're going to talk a little bit of yields. Look at the moves, man, from 140 
to 111. That's the 10 year. There's your 30 year. You want to see something decisive, folks. You see where that you see where that back in August touched 146 on that channel line? Well, you know what that channel line is, folks? Keep your eye on it. That's a trend line, we'll call it. Not exactly a channel line. A trend line going back to the year 2000. Conan O'Brien reference. For those that get it, uh, going back to the year 2000, folks. Now, since 2000, right, the Fed has been an active buyer of treasuries. This thing was at 191. You're at 125. Uh, long dated treasuries, a big risk, obviously, with what's going on. Everybody's saying if you don't want rate exposure, go short, right? Short term, keep it short. Yeah, if you're long term, man, 191 to 125, my goodness, right? Even some of the funds, right? Uh, no, that's not it. What was I? Oh, maybe? No, no, that's not it. TLT, excuse me. That's what I wanted to pull up. Yeah, from 180 to 100, TLT. That's the iShares 20 plus year bond fund. 180 to 101, man. Just huge moves. Now, Let's tie it to the fundamental factor going on here. Now, I had talked about this phenomenon a couple weeks back. Uh, Bloomberg kind of rejuvenating the article, but it's worth rejuvenating the point, folks. The most powerful buyers in treasuries are all bailing at once. I brought up the yen ahead of this because it's important to see where the yen's trading at uh, to understand why it may be tough for the yen in everything going on in Japan as well, stepping in to buy U.S. treasuries with a yen that is so weak right now. Fed, foreign governments, commercial banks all stepping back. More pain for bond investors may be in store amid a buyer void. The biggest void potentially could be the Fed. But it goes beyond that. From Japanese pensions and life insurers to foreign governments to U.S. commercial banks, where once, where once they were lining up to get their hands on U.S. government debt, most have now stepped away. And then, of course, there's the Federal Reserve. So a few weeks ago, they upped the pace that it plans to offload treasuries to $60 billion a month. That is $720 billion in a year, folks. That is three quarters of a trillion dollars in a 12-month period that they would let roll off the balance sheet as opposed to, right, taking that money when that uh, bond or note expires and rolling it back into a demand and buying kind of back. No, they're just going to let it roll off. Now, as Bloomberg states, if one or two of these usually steadfast sources of demand were bailing, the impact, while noticeable, would be uh, little cause for alarm. But for every one of them all at once to pull back is an undeniable source of concern. Now, you want to talk about some numbers. Let's get into some numbers, man. The Fed represents the largest loss of demand. The central bank more than doubled its debt portfolio in two years to an excess of eight trillion dollars now that includes mortgage-backed securities okay and that could fall to about 5.9 trillion by mid 2025 so you're talking about almost three years from right now they would reduce it by two trillion dollars if officials stick with their current roll-off plans What's happening in the economy by the middle of 2025, folks, with where we are? That is anyone's guess, man. You start going out three years. Just tell me where we're going to be six months or 12 months from right now, and that one is hard enough. And here's the quote I want to get to. Since the year 2000, there has always been a big central bank on the margin buying a lot of treasuries. That's a Credit Suisse Group uh, analyst said during a recent live episode of a Bloomberg's Odd Lots podcast. Now we're basically expecting the private sector to step in instead of the public sector in a period where inflation is uncertain, is as uncertain as it has ever been. We're asking the private sector to take down all these treasuries that we're going to push back into the system without a glitch and without a massive premium. Could it happen? Yes. You should be asking yourself that same question too, though, folks. We're pushing $60 billion of treasuries into a market where you have Japan stepping back, you have some companies stepping back, and you have the ability for the Fed to need to keep raising into the future. Right now, uh, I would say their estimates, I talked about it a little last week, are a little bit rosy in terms of what the market is pricing in and what may happen. Because right now, the market's pricing in 75.50 in a quarter, right? 75 for November, probably 50 basis points in December. And then they're pricing in one more 25 basis point cut next year. I would argue that with the jobs numbers we're getting and unemployment continuing to drop to 3.5%, market still adding 260,000 plus jobs. We get the CPI data this week, folks. Watch out for that CPI data because it 
is continuing to run hot. And if it continues to run hot, is the Fed really going to pause after December? Folks, it's going to be December in 50 days, right? Time flies, man. Okay. It is going to be December in about 50 days, five zero. And it's tough for me to understand that the Fed is basically going to be done with their hiking in 50 days. Maybe they throw one more quarter point on top of it when we have the numbers coming in that we do. We get CPI this week. That'll be a big one, man. Not sure how the market reacts if those numbers are still running hot, which is a real possibility. So then you go, OK, if they're running hot, maybe the Fed will have to continue to hike. If they're not running hot, are they going to not? hike that final 1.5% over the next three meetings? No, I'm pretty sure they're going to do that no matter what. I'm pretty sure 75 basis points is happening no matter what. It would take a monumental reversal for 50 not to happen in December, in my opinion. Okay, so really all the risk is to the Fed having to be much more aggressive and much more hawkish than the market is pricing in. That is the real point, that the market is not pricing in an accurate risk to the Fed having to do more. We're going to finish this conversation up, folks, because you're seeing it in how these yields may play out. OK, we're talking about hedging costs surging in tandem with the dollar. OK, 25 percent this year versus the yen. We'll finish this conversation, folks. We'll talk a little mortgage rates and housing as well. Stay tuned. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S and P's open. We're up ten points in the S and P to thirty six sixty three. Nasdaq one hundred hanging on to the gains up by six. Remember, folks, that VIX elevated right now from where we were on Friday. Friday thirty two thirty nine. Even where we were on Friday, right? Think about the sell off we had on Friday. The VIX spikes to only thirty two. We make it above thirty three overnight because we did have the VIX down to as low as thirty six eighteen. So more than forty forty five points from where we are right now to the downside. Finishing up that conversation about notes, bonds, treasuries, the whole deal, uh, tenure, down about two ticks right now, jumping back to the article I was talking about here, uh, because talking about the yen, right? Let's jump to the yen real quick as I jump over, because it makes sense, folks, if you're following everything going on with currencies, yields, et cetera, dollar yen, 145.56, okay? And the part I really wanted to get to in this article, let me find the chart I was just looking at it as well. Oh, come on. Oh, what's it doing to me? I'm getting, here we go. Okay, forgive me for scrolling a bit. This is the chart I wanted, perfect. Uh, Japan investors shout out a US bonds by currency protection costs, okay? First pay attention to the blue. That is our 10 year nominal yield. Uh, that's the yield we quote. It doesn't factor in obviously real yields, okay, which then you're talking about inflation, um, you're talking about hedging costs, okay. The nominal yield right now is pushing 4% in U.S. Treasuries. Japan, the 10-year yield, we'll call it zero. It's not zero, folks. It's probably a quarter point, right? We'll call it zero for all intents and purposes. The 10-year yield hedge for yen investors, check it out in the red, man. Yeah, negative 1%. They're not buying it, folks. Why would you buy a 10-year hedge in the U.S. for minus 1% when you can buy a Japan yield for a quarter point, right? The hedging cost is extreme. Now, this is why Japan is out of the market, okay? I bring it up because it makes sense, folks. Think about it. They are out of the market. They're not buying treasuries. The Fed is not going to be buying treasuries, okay? Then you go into the fact they talk about in this article. It's not just them. The dollar is causing big problems, as they put it, around the world. OK, emerging market central banks have trimmed their stockpiles by 300 billion this year. Yeah. Countries around the world have been running down their foreign exchange reserves, which have been in the dollar, some of them, to defend their currencies against the surging dollar in recent months. Now, I'll digress. Well, before I do, that means limited demand at best from a group of price sensitive investors that traditionally put about 60 percent or more of their reserves into U.S. dollar investments. Then you have banks. They talk about banks, okay? One or two key buyers of treasuries has seemingly backed away, and they picked up the slack. Banks, that is not happening. Demand from U.S. commercial banks has dissipated as Fed policy tightening drains reserves out of the financial system, okay? In the second quarter, banks purchased the least amount of treasuries since the final three months of 2020. The drop in bank demand has been stunning as deposit growth has slowed sharply. This has reduced bank demand for treasuries, particularly as the duration of their assets have extended sharply this year. It adds up to a bearish undertone for rates, as in higher rates potentially coming at you, folks, in a big way. Um, and the digression that I'm going to make, folks, as we have the market pulling back a bit, you got S&P now flat to red, you got NASDAQ flat to red. Anytime you see the market positive, folks, and you see a VIX elevated, now, you know, this move is nothing yet because we were down to 36.18, but always pay attention to that one, man, because it is a warning sign. Doesn't mean you're always going to trade lower, okay? And rightfully, the market is pricing in more volatility premium when, yeah, we may be positive by 10 points, but you were just down at 36.18 and 36.24 overnight, right? But be careful of that one as we have an elevated VIX and a positive market we come into, and what happens? We get a little bit of a sell off. Uh, the digression talking about, okay? is that now Trump was one of the worst offenders out there, but he's not the only one, folks, and you're going to hear it again, okay? People love to promote that they don't want a strong dollar, okay? Because it hurts companies that are selling things overseas. Folks, think about what is going on in America right now, if you live in America, and think about what's going on. You just saw Japan, okay? What's going on there? They have a... a a real yield in the U.S. of negative 1% right now because they have to spend so much money to hedge their weak currency, okay? We're seeing it happen whether it's in commodities, right? These currencies that rely on commodities. Folks, I know it's easy to think like, especially in the U.S., 
where we rely on so much business from overseas, right? Our companies are international, they're selling goods overseas, and we may see an earnings problem in the stock market, okay, in this coming year because of the fact that they are selling goods in an, a, a currency that is super strong, causing their earnings to be a problem when they're collecting currencies that are weak, right? You collect a euro that's weak. The market cares about how many US dollars you make in profit. It doesn't care about how many euros you make. Now those companies can give numbers which are um, currency hedged or whatever they call it, right? Currency fluctuations aside, this is what we would have made without them. That's not how the world works though, folks. Okay, and you are seeing the benefit of a strong dollar. Think about it this way. It's my opinion, okay, but think about it this way because this is literally the reality of it. We have a system where we print paper and we assign that paper a certain value as the United States of America. It sounds so simple, this is the way it works, but when you hear the logic of, of wanting a weak dollar, man, we as a country, we print paper and then other countries pay us for that paper. In the long run, folks, you want that paper to be worth more than what the other country is printing their paper for. You want that to happen. That's the currency that we keep our savings in, right? It is a one world economy, folks. Okay, and so it's very easy in the short term to say, well, if you trash our dollar, all these, um, all of these companies would be able to sell their dollar, their their goods all overseas, right? Yeah, that's not the case, folks, because we're seeing what's happening. You need commodities to do things, right? Chips are becoming a commodity, okay? You don't want a weak dollar, man. We're seeing it play out. These currencies are in a big problem. You see the yen going on right now. Now, we got rising yields, but why do we got rising yields, man? We have rising dollar. Why do we have rising dollar? Because we have yields, because we can actually raise yields, because we have a strong enough economy right now to handle raising yields out there. So keep that in mind, and remember over the long run, right? It's like, I have kids, man. You want a strong dollar, folks. That is the, the you know, the pinning of our economy, it's the pinning of our savings, it's the pin, pinning of what we keep all of our wealth in. Of course you want a strong dollar, and you're seeing it play out right now, man. That chart on the yen, folks, that should be a wake up. Because you want a weak currency, go buy some yen, man. The people in Japan are in big trouble right now, folks, and you're seeing it play out. Um, now, when you talk about how this is going to play out for interest rates, though, and mortgages, it's like a, a eighth level thought process of where this market goes. Now, mortgage rates, they slipped to 6.6%. This is almost like a real estate show, folks, but guess what? I forget whether it's Teddy Kegstad or our man Kevin Hinks, one of them, okay? Uh, the three things you want to keep your eye on right now, folks, you're talking about yields, you're talking about the dollar, right? And uh, I'm losing the third one. But anyway, mortgage rate, 6.6%, the first drop in seven weeks. You see a little bit of a pullback. Home loan costs still near a 15-year high. Now, Bloomberg's got a great article out this morning. We'll tease this as we come into the break. Uh, doesn't mean the market's going to crash, though. Does not mean that, folks. There's a lot more going on in this market right now, and a lot of it having to do with supply. And supply, nobody's going to be selling their house, folks, when they get a 3% mortgage, and you got to get into a mortgage at 6.5% if you want to do one, if you sell your home. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps holding up right now, up by two points at 36.55. NASDAQ takes a dive on the open, 11,040 right now. We get the Dow up 136 right now, and we jump over to the yields. Why not? As we got a little bit of lower price right now, you get the 10-year approaching about 3.89% right now. The yield on the 10-year trading down about five ticks right near the lows that we have of Friday. So jumping back to mortgage, okay? Uh, and the headline from Bloomberg is, here's how weird things are getting in the housing market. And yeah, there's a lot of levels going on, folks. And part of the points that they make here, okay, excuse me, we're in uncharted territory, okay? They talk about, yeah, rising yields are of course going to impact things okay mortgage rates have shot up crimping affordability but at the same time there are very few for sellers and therefore very little inventory okay and the quote as they say a lot of these statistics that we use to forecast things like housing activity and by that we mean home sales or housing starts are levels that we either haven't seen before or or we've seen them we haven't seen them for decades okay the listings of existing available homes, okay, these are existing, they're not new, they're people who have a home, and they're in it, and they're gonna sell it, okay? It was never lower than it was earlier this year. We've been increasing just a very little bit off the bottom for the past three months. I wonder what's gonna happen to that number now that the mortgage rates are even continuing to rise, continuing, and what do you now have? A little bit of a pullback in prices, potentially, even if you're talking about one to 2%. <clears throat> um, they think it's going to keep listings tight, which will keep home prices more supported. Now, that is a very general term, okay? It could be more supported, and it might drop only 15% as to 30, or it might drop, what, 20 as opposed to 30, or it might drop 5 as opposed to 10, whatever that is. But here's the kicker, right? And we all know it, but keep it in mind, if you solve this equation, folks, you will make a lot of money because what's going to happen in real estate is going to determine a lot. It is. It's just such a big market. Current homeowners, in order to sell their home, in a lot of instances, would have to take out a mortgage that might be 300 points higher than their current mortgage. Now, they say 2, 250, or 3. Folks, the mortgage rate is 6.66%. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are in mortgage rates over 4%. There are a lot of people at mortgage rates under 4% as well, folks. So you're talking about almost 300 basis points. They're just not going to be willing to sell their home at the lower price point that might be more affordable for the first-time home buyer. It's not going to happen, man. Um, yeah, and we got mortgage rates at almost 7% now. Um, and housing affordability is deteriorating rapidly. Yeah, I would say so. When you add in the payments, folks, you're talking about 
almost double sometimes the payments what you're paying and then i've been talking about it on this program that we have an insurance crisis going on in florida man hopefully DeSantis gets control of it because it's going to be made even worse by hurricane ian now uh and it is a severe deal folks i told you i gotta get a citizen's quote i got a quote from my four bedroom two bath okay it is a duplex each side is a two bedroom one bath it is a total of 1590 square feet looks bigger than it is. Each side about 800 square feet, a two bedroom, one bath, 800 square foot apartment in a beautiful single family home um, neighborhood in Tampa. It's grandfathered in, so it's really just single families, not duplexes, it's a fortunate property in there. The insurance bill that my renewal company sent me, folks, was $7,300 for that property. $7,300 for that property for a duplex uh, that's basically a four bedroom, two bath home for all intents and purposes, that's only 1,600 square feet, okay? You don't hear about it if you're not in Florida, folks. If you are in Florida, you're hearing about it because you have to pay the bill. If you're a homeowner, you're seeing that bill. Uh, get a citizen's quote. I'm going to. I've heard some great stories of citizens that really reduce things. I'm talking about reducing it, folks, by like 50, 60, 70% sometimes. Some people talking about because some of these numbers for renewal that the insurance companies are sending out are just bonkers because they're ready to pull out of the whole state. And hopefully they don't because we're going to be left with citizens. And then what happens? Every single resident in Florida is going to end up paying for the insurance debacle of privatizing insurance in the state of Florida when we get hit by hurricanes, folks. It's basically what's happening right now because the market is such a mess because it's rampant with fraud from trial lawyers because guess what? Lawyers are usually politicians, so politicians know lawyers, so it's very difficult to solve the problem in Tallahassee right now for all the elected officials in Florida because they get a lot of money from lawyers, and lawyers are the ones that really are benefiting from the broken system of insurance um, running up costs for litigation that really should not be taking place. That's its own deal, man, but guess what? That's a big problem as well. But this market, folks, there is going to be a steep, steep supply problem and what's going to happen when we have a big supply problem right um and yeah they put it people are locked in at their current homes at these lower rates folks so what we're already seeing what we're anticipating going forward is that the inventory the listings of existing homes available for sale all right it was never lower than it was this one the inventory of single family homes is lower than it has been in at least 40 years OK, inventory is in there, folks. Uh, they're going to be a big battle right now with inventory. And then you tie into that rent. OK, and then you tie into that where mortgage rates are. Yeah, the sales are going to dry up, folks. But guess what? Uh, available supply is also going to dry up because people were willing to sell their house when they could get into the next one at 4 percent. Right. That was part of the run up. People were able to take advantage of the steep acceleration the market has seen because they were able to get into that next home if they wanted to at a similar price. Um, for a mortgage, that is, for a similar price. Maybe not the same exact price they're selling it. Maybe you got a $400,000 home. It goes up to seven fifty. dollars You say, you know what? I don't have to live there. I'm going to pocket the $350,000, and I'm going to go move somewhere else for X period of time. It becomes not as easy of a financial transaction, even in your head, right, where you know if you get out of that home, number one, you got rent prices that are still continuing to climb, okay? And number two, you want to buy that same exact home and you're buying it at a mortgage rate of seven, seven and a half percent, man, which is going to just blast your payment through the moon. So that is going to disincentivize people from selling, which should help prop up the market to a certain degree. Now, we take that one step further, folks, to CPI. We get CPI this week. OK, CPI. Uh, I got to get the exact statistic because shelter, which takes in rent, of course, and mortgages, shelter costs. OK, I think it's about one third or 30 percent of the headline cpi number the number i do know is it's close to 40 percent of the core number okay what happens with those prices is going to be a huge determinant folks and no matter what happens we are going to see a lag in rental prices climbing because real estate has shot up in a big way even if it plateaus or pulls back a bit rents still need to catch up so that's where i keep going what's going to happen man when we get the cpi especially the core number. Now, I bring up crude here because crude has been no help, man. What if we have rents pushing the core number higher? And what if we just get a rebound in crude to around 100 to 115? That would push the headline number up. And what would that mean, folks? That would mean that we'd have CPI running hot as we come into the beginning of next year when the Fed's supposed to stop hiking. 
that's the one that's tough for me, folks, because right now I see CPI running hot. There's no way around it, in my opinion. And what happens when it's running hot? Is the Fed really going to pause and say, we started hiking in March of 2022. We're approaching March of 2023. We're going to pause and let things play out. It's possible, okay, because they will be in a restrictive policy rate at that point. But if the CPI is running hot, man, and I see this market running hot because I don't see the real estate market collapsing to the point that rents aren't going to be raised for the next year or two. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We're going to talk some earnings when we come back. We'll get out of that housing market. We'll talk some J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Delta, Pepsi, all out this week. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all Tigers and Tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the crude contract spiking up to 93.64. We give up a quick dollar there to 92.56. You talk about some volatility, man. These are five minute bars, folks. We just traded up a dollar and 20 cents and down a dollar in the last, what, 20 minutes of trading in that crude contract. SP is rolling over. We're now negative by 12. You're now negative by about 20 points on the open. NASDAQ negative by 90. Dow barely hanging on to the gains, but all the markets trade lower on the open. We got the gold contract continuing to struggle up by 20. You up down $26. We jump over to currencies. Dollar index, 113.58. Let's see how that yen is trading right now. We get the dollar yen, 145.58, uh, climbing towards that overnight high of 145.66. And I think the high on the yen is just shy of 146. Yeah, 145.89. 
made uh, September 22nd. All right, jumping around to some of the banks. So who do we got here? Let me pull them up in terms of who we're talking about. We get, oh, come on, I'm pulling them up as we, we, we got JP Morgan and we have Wells Fargo. Let's kick it off with those two because I think they're Friday morning. morning. JP Morgan, you're up by about half a percent today. We jump over to the Analyze tab. We take a look at the Earnings tab. Yes, they are. They're going to be out with their numbers October 14th. Oh, I did have this up. I had it all pulled up, and my screens are not quite cooperating in terms of where we are right now. Ah, oh, forgive me, folks. Okay, we do get J.P. Morgan, so they are out Friday. We got Wells Fargo. I believe they're out Friday as well. Yes, they are. We'll jump around as we finish up the programs. We got Delta Airlines. They're out with their numbers on Thursday. Delta priced in about a buck fifty-five move. We also get Pepsi. They're out uh, Tuesday, tomorrow. So Pepsi tomorrow, Delta on Thursday, Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan on Friday. Earnings season is here, folks. As I mentioned, we also get Fed minutes this week, and we get CPI data Thursday morning at 8.30 in the morning. We'll finish up with an airline. Why not? Delta Airlines will take a look at the chart, put it on a daily. You talk about a struggle. Put it on a weekly. Yeah, chopping around, man. 29.34, higher crude prices, possible recession, S&Ps negative by 10, folks. Stay tuned. We got live programming all day, folks. Basil's up next. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 11, Fast Market at 12, Larry at 1, Dave at 2, Tom O'Brien, my dad, live at 3. Have a great Monday, everybody.